morning everybody, it's Ben Jones here, Badger from Bronson Coffee Roasters. A um, little bit different angle in the workshop. Uh, today, it's the 15th day of March uh, 2021, and we're going to talk through improving your pour over uh, game at home. So to, use, to do this, I wanna look specifically at how kind of the water flows through the bed of coffee. So I have, um, I have this, it's actually a knockoff um, Kalita Wave. So the Kalita Wave, that's this little fella right here. Um, it's cool, I like it. And then there's this company that they, really kind of all they do is they copy other people's designs and then uh, steal the engineering and do that. So we're gonna use that because it's the only um, see-through pour over, it's only clear, transparent pour over method that I have. So, all right. Well, what I'm going to do is I've got my brew device. We've got our decanter. We've got our uh, Kalita ripoff. I'm just going to drop in a Kalita filter. And then with the Kalita filter, we don't really have to rinse them. But um, sometimes I like to give it a little rinse just because it helps to hold things in place. So a little rinse there. For those of you who don't use gooseneck kettles um this is going to be a very gooseneck centric video because we're going to be talking a lot about how and where we pour those things make a big difference um all right down here i have my 19 grams of coffee pre-ground um it's on the coarser side of drip so not as coarse as chemex definitely not as coarse as french press but somewhere right between reason we're going with a side view is because I want you to be able to see, watch what's happening right down here. Watch what's happening, the way the water behaves against the edge of that glass. All right, so to start, we give it a bloom. I'm just gonna pour into the middle, start adding some water. We shouldn't be seeing much happening around those edges just yet. I have just over 40 grams. Our bloom water, again, we want it to be roughly twice. So we're having some decent saturation. That's looking all right. Purpose of the bloom is to help the gases escape, prime the rest of the beans for the flow of water. All right. With full immersion, it's not an issue, but with drip throughs, with pour overs, we're fighting or we're having to counteract gravitation and the flow of water through. The water doesn't sit and stay, all right. So there we got a little bloom. And as far as we can tell, this is looking pretty all right. We got, you know, nice and even, nothing's looking really strange. I'm limiting all my pours right now generally into the center of the bed. So everything right up here where you can't see, that's where I'm keeping the water, I'm not pouring it against the edge. The theory is that every bit of water that I put in is gonna be passing through coffee that hasn't given up all of its flavor yet. On this pour, I'm gonna come back to the center, and then I'm gonna to start to hit those edges. You see what happens when I start to hit the edge? this water that comes right down the edge, it essentially runs right past the filter and there's a bit barrier between then that water and the coffee. The filter holds the water out of it and that water isn't contributing to the extraction of coffee flavors. Now that's not the end of the world, but if you're looking for incredibly precise precision, you wanna control exactly how much water contacts the coffee grounds and when we end up pouring around the edge like this and we get the water that passes right down through the edge uh, it, it we get a you know we call it a bypass it's bypassing the brew it's not much different than if I were to just do this it's gonna function essentially in the same way it's just adding water that didn't pull out coffee flavors so to combat that we're gonna keep 
pouring right into the middle. And I apologize, I'm going to shake the camera now because I'm going to take it off of the cradle mount. That happens. All right, and then I'm going to bring it here and try to hold it so y'all can see. <laughs> Adding the coffee. All right, try adding the water just kind of the middle, but also swirling around. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very good at holding the camera and doing the things. All right, I'm really not good at that at all. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So we're looking here just to add to the middle. I don't want to pour down the edges too much. And the reason I don't just pour straight to the middle is because that'll cause a similar problem where we just create a channel that goes right down the middle. And that's why we see this circling around thing. Now, I do have a friend who bruised the V60 just pouring straight down the middle the whole time. And for her, that works really well. She's not looking to win any brew competitions. She's found a grind setting that works well for that technique. Um, she just pours right down the middle. She keeps it simple. And that's how she does her daily cup of coffee. So they're both good options. The difference is if you're looking to really kind of improve the consistency, the trying to get maximum extraction, per gram of beans, so getting the best value out of the beans, but then also trying to get the most repeatable cup of coffee you can get. You want to start controlling those little variables. You're going to want to start to shoot for a more homogenous overall extraction of the coffee beans. So, and then it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a brew chat if we didn't talk about how flat the coffee comes out. That's something we like to look at is the, we look at the grounds, is a uniform, do we have any big pitting? Um, if we have any pitting, that can be problematic. That just shows that the water's flowing really heavily onto one side, causing some channels. It's a nice even flatbed suggests that the water passed through top to bottom uniformly and evenly, and that as it all sat, it brewed well. All right, but the big test, always the part that we really care about is what happens when we take our mug, pour our coffee into it, and then have a sip. The rooster's in the background talking. Hope you all can hear it. It's kind of fun. Thank you for hanging out and indulging me while I drop the camera and then wave it around aimlessly and nothing. I'm glad I put on, I almost wore, wore pajama pants today because it was kind of cold out here. And the pajama pants were nice and warm. <clears throat> so, but you would have seen my pajamas and that would have been disastrous. So, to take your pour over to the next level Really what we're talking about is maximizing the complete and overall extraction, getting it to come out evenly. The easiest way to get a good, balanced, even extraction, in my opinion, is with a full immersion brewer, French press, aero press, clever dripper. Um, mason jar with a filter jammed onto the top. Our coffee today, glad you asked, is I'm finishing off. I got a little bit of the El Valle left. It's a coffee out of Guatemala. It's a farm that we, Bad Door's been working with, oh my goodness, I want to say over 20 years. Um, this is really fun. It's one of those farms where our coffee buyer, Bob, you know, has a good relationship with the owners and they're able to chat 
about how things are going, coffee quality, um, where we can offer prices that help them to maintain and do what they need to do so they can be sustainable and then so we can get some delicious coffee. Because if they're not winning, we're not winning, and then you can't win. So it's a good cup of coffee. I also added a little bit of, I'm still still doing this trick where I take a little bit of the natural coffee and sprinkle some of that in. I'm doing about 15 grams of the um, Guatemala and then four more grams on top of this natural process. It's incredibly potent flavoring. Um, for me, it's too much as a single cup of coffee, but just to have that coffee, but I like to sprinkle a little bit in there, here and there. That's a good cup of coffee. Thank you for joining. I will see you back on Friday where we will talk a little bit more about, I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll figure that out. Take care, everybody.